35, it says the Holy Spirit is given to those who obey Him. Mm. And I've never in all these years ever asked God for more Holy Spirit. I've never asked God for more faith. I've never asked God for more power or more authority. Because I first have to ask the question, what have I done with what I have? And if I've not used something correctly and I've misused it or used it as an occasion of the flesh, then why would I want more? Because in the end, I have to face the judgment that and the record will show that I received all this and did nothing with it, that I'm the lazy, the wicked servant. And to which Jesus said in his parables, in his teaching, he said, you lazy and wicked servant, and he was cast into outer darkness. So I don't want anybody to be the lazy and the wicked servant. I want them to I want them to learn to be faithful in the little they have. So in, over the years I've learned this, that my, I used to be Pentecostal charismatic and I would always be praying for more of this and more of that and everybody get excited, you know. Oh, we're going to get more Holy Spirit, more power. Mm. But really, it's not right. I mean, you might get a dashing power and feel great for five minutes. But you haven't dealt with being faithful. And I think faithfulness is one of the most important parts of the Bible. I'd rather have a little from God and be faithful in the little than have a lot and be very unfaithful in what I've been given. And I believe God will give me more when I'm ready for it. See, that's again the beauty of the Holy Spirit being in charge. Instead of running this yourself from your mind and from your understanding, you totally abandon yourself to the Holy Spirit and you let Him decide what you need now. He's running the whole show. He knows when you need something. He knows the righteousness. He knows everything. So you trust him. And this is God's new system. This kingdom is here now. And, I, and I've said this before, but it is the most powerful kingdom. It's more powerful than any kingdom that we have seen on this earth. More powerful than the United States. More powerful than the UK. More powerful than any country we might live in. But people don't believe it. You are, born on, you are born and brought up from UK, right? Yes, I'm yeah. from UK. Yeah. Basically, you came from which uh, denomination? I'm from Pentecostal background. Yeah, your father He, and mother was born and They born. were like, uh, yes, They. my mother was a Methodist. Methodist. My, my father was also brought up in a Methodist church, but he never accepted Christ until very later in his life. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but it's like me, I heard the gospel. It didn't really change my life, but it was only later when I heard about what I'm sharing now, that I really begin to be transformed. Mm -hmm. And I learned to listen to God. I learned to hear His voice, do His will, function under the Holy Spirit. And I say the biggest challenge, the biggest challenge for the church today is to stop thinking. I really believe that. They don't see, the, they cannot imagine living without thinking. And I say to the church this, if you really repented, you stop thinking. You stop taking thoughts to your mind. You don't try to go there because why would you think anyway? It's a waste of time. Tell me what you can achieve by thinking. You can't do the divine will. You, you're not going to understand anything of God's work. Thinking doesn't produce righteousness. It brings fear, doubt, unbelief, worry, stress. Because you don't have all the information with the mind. You cannot get all the information, but you just quiet yourself and listen. You get all the information from God that you need to know. So, also easy. many people study the Bible from the flesh, actually. Absolutely. Correct. And that's why we have all the denominations. Just, uh, okay, three chapter daily or six chapter daily or time devil like time devil. Just uh, study, this is like a... Yeah. It's a fleshly study, you know, you cannot understand anything. They cannot it understand can be, they but, cannot But let's say that in itself is not wrong. I'm not against Bible reading. I'm against studying the Bible with your mind. That's what I'm against. Mind, okay. So let's say for example, you could take one person and they're doing this study, like you say, three chapters a day, which is excellent actually. It's good. But the person who's reading it with their mind, using their eyes, is not going to learn much. But the one who reads it out loud, audibly, 
because faith comes by hearing, it doesn't come by looking. Yeah, yeah. As they read it audibly to themselves, later and at the right time, the Holy Spirit will bring back verses to their mind. Mm. So, Bible, so Bible reading, reading is loudly we have to read, right? Yeah, I think it's the best way. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, if you understand, when I read the Bible, let's say oh, I read some other verse, I can see it, but I won't see all of it. I use this example and I, I tell people and I say, okay, read John 3.16 and everybody knows John 3.16, it's mm -hmm. a common verse. But they don't read the bit that says, and they should not perish. So they don't see that. And, and I've proven, I've gone around the world and I've asked people, I said, you give that verse to new converts because you want them to be sure of salvation and so they know how to be saved. So you throw them John 3.16. But it doesn't say there you'll never perish. It just says you should not perish. So God's plan is that no one should perish. 2 Peter 3, 9 says that God is long-suffering, kind, wanting everywhere to come to repentance. But doesn't mean they will. Doesn't mean they will come to repentance. Doesn't mean they won't perish. You still can perish. And even John 3, 16 does not give you a guarantee of salvation. The verse that gives you guarantee of salvation is in John 10, 27, 28. And it says there, My sheep hear my voice, I know them, and they follow me, and I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall anyone pluck them out yeah, of my yeah, You are teaching the Bible around 36 years, right? Yes. Uh, did you read any other uh, books, like uh, any other holy books? Sure, I read whatever book God tells me to read. And the beauty of this is that I'm not... I believe within every person you can read, every author, there is something there for you, if it's from God. One day I was in the bookstore and I was you know, looking through the books and I particularly like Charles Finney. He's one of my favorite authors. He's a great man and he's got great debt. He's a lawyer in the 1800s. So he looked at the Bible like a lawyer, which meant he looked particularly for the conditions as well as the promises. And most people just look at the promises, they don't look at the conditions. So in that way, he's got eyes to see, and I really enjoy reading him because he brings out that part, and it really helps you understand the scriptures. But anyway, I was reading one of his books, and I saw it on the shelf, I saw it on the shelf, and I, I said, Holy Spirit, do you want me to buy that book? It's a thin book. And the Holy Spirit witnessed. So I said, okay, so I took the book, and I took it to the shop, to pay for it, but to, to, to the, and I took it home with me, and I, I read the book, not too, it didn't take me too long to read it, and I read it through, and I really felt like there was something burning for me, like there was something really in that book for me to understand, but I didn't feel I understood it, so I asked the Holy Spirit, I said, Holy Spirit, did I learn what you wanted me to learn from this man, and, and the Holy Spirit said, no, so that's really a bit, so I said, okay, I read it again. So I started reading the book the second time, and I finished it again. I felt this heat, this like real sense of, you know, this is a man of God and it's really strong, and I'm, I can feel the, the, the awareness of the depth of this man, but I couldn't get off the pages what God was trying to teach me. And so again, I asked the Holy Spirit, did I learn the thing you wanted me? He said, no. You know, so you then know. eventually I, I said, okay, God, Turn me to the page. If you, if God, have mercy on me. I'm a very intellectual man. I said, God, turn me to the page where I need to. And I turned to the page, and there it was. Some believers ask me, you know, Pastor, yeah, how we can pray every time? How we can read Bible every time? You have to go for any, like, enjoy, you know, to time pass, because it's boring. Yeah. So, which books they can read it, or what they can watch it? Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I suggest the way they're reading the Bible is a boring way. Yeah. It, what I'm saying to you is this, that um, when you read the scriptures in the way I'm talking about, it's very exciting. Because say you read three chapters. Now, you're reading it out loud. You don't need to, th you don't need to remember. So it's not a stressful experience. Say you, you're reading Matthew. So you read Matthew out loud. And you read it out loud so you can hear your own words because the Holy Spirit is going to bring those words back to your mind. So you read it, and then you close the book. So you don't actually have to concentrate. You just have to speak. It's the work of the Holy Spirit. You close the book, and you forget what you've read now. 
and you put the book down then you go off to work now it's important that you stay in the spirit that your mind is still but if you do this right it's very exciting on the way to work the verse comes to your mind or something happens and God reminds you of something and your mind it's really exciting because suddenly you're, 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 you're being taught by the Holy Spirit he's bringing things at the right time to your mind whereas before when I did it myself I'm sitting there I'm a bit tired you know maybe I'm in the flesh maybe I've had a long night maybe I haven't slept and I'm getting up early in the morning and it's not one of those good days you know uh, and I'm trying to read while I'm traveling or I'm driving the car or I'm sitting in the office I just put the tape no just put the uh, uh, the Bible reading yeah tapes. sure so I can hear it the Bible reading yes yeah. <laughs> sure if I can I cannot read the loudly because of one public place sure maybe in the car with the uh, talking with other people yeah or maybe in the office time no yeah they can only read because other people saw the other stuff saw there what i done so what i did i put in the uh, yeah, earphones the earphones on yes uh, cause is bible reading yes and again if you can just restrict yourself in that system if you're using audible i don't like it only because um you know when sometimes when they read like this you can cover vast amounts of scripture in a very short time and you sort of lose the thread not that you need to understand with your mind but let's say for example you you've got these two earphones in just i suggest can you just try this one thing rather than just play a lot of scripture do like one chapter at a time break repeat that either repeat or take a break do one hour shut it off and then say like in a couple of hours when you got another break put another one on chapter 2 or chapter 3 but the idea of that is that if you take it in small chunks um you know let let me give you another example okay so say there's two ways of read two ways of doing this if i do the audible bible okay say i'm going i'm going through the audible bible and the phone rings okay so the phone rings but here there's an important point that god wants to teach me from that particular order of bible and the phone rings deliberately and satan could be behind this he makes the phone ring at the right time so that you don't hear that bit that you need to hear he can do that satan can do that if he wants to, i mean if he if he has access he'll do that but you see when you read the bible out loud that he can't do that because if the phone rings i stop reading and i answer the phone and put the phone down again and i go back to the place i was at see that's why i don't like the audio bible it's okay but like you said i think the best approach was what you said was play it a second time especially if there was a phone call in the middle of that reading and keep the reading small so do like matthew 1 stop then play it again if there was any disruption any distraction that might have stopped you from hearing and then play it again because god is involved he is he should be directing which chapter you should be reading and then you read it and you should expect by faith the holy spirit to quicken something within that time why we are teaching the people do not watch uh, uh, movies yeah cinema right movies why we are addressing them i think that the, the key thing is that somebody who's weak in the faith doesn't realize what you're watching when you watch movies and the thing is in the end of the day let's say you've got to work out your salvation in fear and trembling and you're chucking a load of junk in there mm-hmm. the bible says the eyes of the window of your soul and so what you're watching when you're watching a movie you're watching you know somebody attacking somebody defending somebody kick fighting somebody swearing somebody you know you, you can watch all kinds of movies and even if it's not that it could be human wisdom it could be man's way of dealing with problems and life situations and you're just drinking it in and it's not a bad movie but you you know you really need to pray about this and say god do i even need to watch any movies 
And the way I would approach it is, personally, I would not watch any except the Holy Spirit direct me to watch it. He has to put the thought in my mind. He has to give me the name of the movie. He has to tell me I want you to watch it. And he has to tell me why he wants to watch it. Otherwise, I don't watch it. I don't watch it because I want to watch it. Mm. I watch it because he wants me to watch it. You see, I have no desire of myself. I have died. You see, people don't deny themselves. They, they want to be a Christian, but they want to have the right to do what they want. They want to have the right to watch movies. They want to have the right to go and have a coffee. They want to have the right to have their own freedom and do what they want. Well, that doesn't work in Christianity. In Christianity, you completely deny yourself, your own feelings, your own desires, your own wants. They die in the grave. They go away and you come up in newness of life. But people don't want to die. They don't want to die. They want to reserve the right to do what they also, want. Also, uh, we can um, listen the, what is it called, preaching, no? Preaching. Preaching, yeah. Yeah. Also, we can listen many pastors preaching or not. Sure. Again, anything the Holy Spirit tells you to do. So, I, so also should Holy Spirit tell you. Absolutely. Then because only we can watch. Yeah. Because again, good because is... Because there is a wrong messages. Of course, there's wrong messages. Cut messages are there. Yes. So once the Holy Spirit tells you to watch, then you can... And watch. also do this. when If the Holy Spirit tells you to watch, do two things. Number one, say, Holy Spirit... Can you tell me why I'm watching this? Is there something, you know, alert me. Yeah, let me. Something what is the thing you want me to learn from this? And then when you finish the, the, the message, ask the Holy Spirit, have I learned what you want me to learn? I always do that now. When I read a book or I read something, I say, Father, what are you trying to show me? I'm, I'm not interested in what this man is teaching. Yeah. Because he might be teaching wrong. I don't know. I'm not judging him. He could be a good man. But I don't know him. So I'm re I'm so as I'm reading the book, I read it and I'm saying, Holy Spirit, is this what you want me to learn? He says, no. So I keep reading. And I'm reading a bit more. Is it, Do you want me to learn this? No. So I keep reading. I mean, it's all, I'm reading it, but I'm not reading you, When we read the Bible, what we do is this. We're reading something. Let's say we read like Matthew or... Matthew somewhere, Matthew 27 or Matthew 25. And there's a message there, but that message is not for you now. It, you're not ready for that. It's like there, and you're here. And there's a lot of messages in between before you get to that level, and that's the message that God's going to give you. When I read a book, I'm reading it like that. I, I don't know if that message, I'm ready for that. I don't assume that I have maturity, that I'm going to be able to understand that teacher, that it might be a good man. It's somebody who's had more experience than me in the Christian faith. So I can't assume that I'm ready for his teachings. So I just read it. And as I read it then, if the Holy Spirit then brings it back to my remembrance later, the teaching in that book, then I know I'm ready for it. And I also know, because he brought it back to my mind, that that teaching is right. Because he wouldn't bring that back to my remembrance if it was a wrong teaching. So it's all through the Holy Spirit. Why would we reject the Holy Spirit in learning? Why would we reject the Holy Spirit for righteousness sake? For He's everything when it comes to the Christian life. And He is the Spirit of Christ. So I'm not taken away from Christ. He is the Spirit of Christ. So He is functioning under Jesus. And through that, I can also get to know Jesus through the Holy Spirit because He is like the... He's going to communicate the heart of Jesus. He's going to teach me about Jesus. I can then interact with Jesus, ask Jesus a question, and I get the answer through the Holy Spirit. So repent and uh, listen Holy Spirit. Yes, repent is listening to the Holy Spirit. It's, right? it's not thinking. If we understand repentance, as repent I said, and is Holy Spirit listen, listen Holy Spirit. Yeah, uh, repent and uh, repent is listening to the Holy Spirit. Listening Holy Spirit, right? It's rejecting what I think is rejecting human wisdom. It's rejecting logic, common sense, what seems to be right. 
you reject all that and you accept God's holy wisdom. Paul said it like this. He said, if any man truly wants to be wise, he must first become a fool. So the system of becoming wise under the Holy Ghost is you first become foolish and you forget all this natural wisdom and you just do what the Holy Spirit says. Holy Spirit teach you whatever in the Bible, right? Yes. It do not teach you from outside. Absolutely. He's going to take... Well, I mean, you don't know what the Holy Spirit's going to take, but I don't think he's ever going to teach me something contrary to the Word. Because he... He knows the word. So he's not going to tell me to do a sin. Hmm. He's not going to tell me to do something contrary to the law. He's not going to tell me to, to hurt somebody. You know, the Holy Spirit is real and he's going to tell me, love your enemies. He's going to remind me to love my wife, to pray continually, to rejoice always. I mean, he is going to be the excellent teacher. So I don't even have to, like, Remember scripture. This is the good news now. Please, I hope everybody's hearing what I'm saying. You don't have to remember anything. It's not down to your ability to remember scripture. I, I see people trying to memorize scripture. And I mean, if the Holy Spirit tells you to memorize a verse, that's fine. But the ideal would be if God just supernaturally puts it in your mind. And then it's wonderful because you can relax, you can enjoy life, you don't have to go around thinking, you're not trying to regurgitate scripture all the time. You actually can be free to just look at the birds and then feel the air and breathe and walk around and have a good life. I'm not thinking every day about, oh, this scripture, that scripture, I need to say another prayer, I need to read my Bible in the next five minutes and I am being directed by the Holy Spirit. I just doing whatever the Holy Spirit says. You know, many people having faith in God the beginning stage. Mm -hmm. After that, many years uh, the faith goes down. Why? I think they lose sight of that wonderful relationship with God, and I and I even wonder. Self relationship, right? I wonder, yes, and I wonder if really they even started right. I wonder if in the beginning, I mean, like I've heard stories of people, uh, some people have said, you know, that this is the honeymoon period, don't worry, it'll wear off after a while. In other words, they, in the initial stage, we get a lot of grace in the beginning when we start with God, because we're babies, we don't know much, so the grace is there, it's flowing, and we can do no wrong. And then there a, comes a time when that runs out. I don't mean that God runs out of grace, because He's the God of all grace, but we run out of grace because we're using the grace in a wrong way. We're using it as an occasion of the Everybody's flesh. talking about prosperity, and and miracle, 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 breakthrough, miracle. all the blessings, but all nobody blessings. mentions the real, real heart of the Bible is in the cross. Yeah. And so that's now considered old, even outdated. People, even the people doesn't want to hear this one, the real mm. God, uh, real God of God also. No. The cross, they don't want to repent, they don't want no. to believe. So, blessing and deliverance. And, and, and that's another reason why I don't get involved in these sort of what I call minor skirmishings of, you know, this man said that, that man said this. To me, they're all wrong. Yeah. If you're not preaching the cross, you've lost your way. So, God loves to, from us, repent, then turn to God. Yes. Hallelujah. And turn to God means that we turn to Him and hear His voice. You repent, let's understand the word, let's go back to that statement because it's a very good verse. It says, let's follow the steps.